Hello and welcome back. I'm going to excuse the mess on my desk. I'm actually in the middle of trying to rearrange certain items in the lab and acquired some uh, computers I'm actually working on for donating to the local school district. Recently, it was probably about eight or nine computers and motherboards and parts and I need to test and everything. So, But I usually don't do reviews on sellers, uh, particularly, especially not on eBay. I'm not a, wasn't a, never a big fan of eBay in the past due to past experience, a bad experience I had with them, but there is a uh, a guy who is well known on eBay his name is Frankie Tong and he sells one particular item that I was after unfortunately when I was in communication with him he was out of stock but I still did purchase some other things from his site one of my friends actually told me that his shipping was amazingly fast for coming from Hong Kong to the United States and I was like, how fast can fast really be when it, when it comes to, you know, shipping halfway around the world? So you can see here on my eBay profile, I actually looked at this today and this shocked me. Uh, payment sent on September 24th. Uh, today's date is actually October 2nd. It was estimated delivery between October 6th and October 20th. And I was on eBay today and I figured I'd just look at some of my shippings and see where they're tracking to and it said deliver to mailbox. I said you gotta be kidding me already. So I'll be darn. Let's take a look. I walked down to my mailbox and there it was. Two United States from Frankie Tong in Hong Kong and that was really fast. I mean amazingly fast considering I actually held off on shipping this package a day. I asked Frankie, he said, please hold off on shipping my order because I may add one or two more things to it. He said, no problem. So the actual purchase date I showed you on the eBay profile, it didn't actually ship until two days after that purchase date and that was at my request. I want to be clear about that. He didn't hold off shipping. He was ready to go that day. I asked him to hold off because I wanted to add a few more items. So let's take a look at the uh, packaging quality for such a speedy delivery from halfway around the world. I really didn't expect anything to be nearly that fast. But since he was able to provide such fast shipping, I'm actually going to kind of do a review on his shipping service. Um, I'm not quite sure how he does it. I ordered something else actually a day or two before I ordered his products and they're still, as far as I can tell, on the uh, Asian side of the mail delivery system. They haven't even hit the United States Post Office for the tracking number to transfer over. So everything I ordered seems to have come in one nice size Ziploc baggie sealed up, which ignored the cut. I actually just did this when I was opening the package. And then once you go inside that order, that bag, Everything else seems to be individually laid out and individually sealed. Again, in, in, in quality bags. I mean, we're talking some thick bags here. We're not talking the, uh, the really cheap bags. And here, here's a surprise. This, I have to say. Here, hold on. So you have your quality bags and then you have your really... Let me see, do I have... I know I have some thin, cheap bags around here. No, I might have thrown them out. I probably did because they're not worth keeping. That's how cheap they are. Oh no, I do have some. Okay. So, you have your really cheap thin bags that, let's put these aside. I got a collection of those cheap thin bags. I don't use them for anything. But these things are just horrible. They're, they're just skimpy. They would rip easily. Frankie's package actually came delivered in a thick type Ziploc bag and then individually wrapped in thick Ziploc type bags as well, which is a really, really nice touch. Uh, very well protected, double padded envelope and not squished in the envelope. He uses the envelopes that actually has a spacer so as he puts stuff in, there's plenty of room. So we're not squishing all the items together where everything's rubbing together. So it really, really just imp impressive. I gotta say, I just unexpected. And then here's something that I, I don't see anymore, 
from many sellers at all. I've received, I can't tell you how many items that are IC based or static sensitive uh, chips or programmers or, and they've come in stuff like this. Take this for example, this little pink bag. This pink bag is not uh, a static proof sensitive bag and neither is a normal plastic clear see-through bag and I've received them that way as well. Uh, it just boggles my mind that you know I, I received certain things that are stack sensitive that are actually wrapped up in standard plastic and then my first thought is I have to test these chips to even make sure they that they're working. You know I if I ordered any IC chips from Frankie I wouldn't worry about it because they come in true static sensitive shielding bags <clears throat> which is another great quality that I don't see that often so here's an IC programmer this is for the uh, USB power monitor which I haven't received and this actually comes with four the pogo prongs and you can see they're actually sealed off separately in the top of the package here so they're not mixed in with the programmer and the, and the cable as well which is really nice and, and and I don't have the programmer yet, so we're not, or I'm, I don't have the device that I need to, to use this for to program, so I'm not going to open it right now. But, um, you know, the color he does tell you is just uh, whatever he has in stock. I'm glad to see I got red and not something like pink or something. Red's actually one of my favorite colors, and red and black is always a nice combination. Matches every other cable on the desk. So here's two Bluetooth adapters, which is also very individually sealed on each single one which is great which will also be used for the power module for uh, remote login capabilities once I receive that so we'll leave this alone and we'll do a separate video on soldering those into place you can never have enough cables or adapters for that fact so he had a large variety of different cables and adapters that he says on the, on the description are nice silicon gauge wires and these are 16 gauge wires these are quality pressed cables these are not just you know some kind of cheap uh, banana plug where it's just the, the cords just pressure snapped in there or anything this is completely sealed has tension relief on it these remind me a lot of a uh, of a much better wrapper than I expected to receive honestly uh, let me see this cable here that I actually did these are Pomona. There it is. So these are the, the these I ordered separately and actually adapted onto this BNC cable. Um, it originally came with cheaper uh, mini grabbers, and these actually remind me of a smaller version of the Pomona grabbers. Actually, uh, they have a good good spring retention feeling to it. Smooth smooth action has a slit up top to keep everything in line so it doesn't twist or turn. The cable seals in there nicely. It's got, it's got a nice size. It could have actually gone probably to a 14 gauge even. There's enough room in that hole there to, to put a heavier gauge cable on there, which is nice because this one, being an authentic Pomona grabber, it, it uh, has a smaller hole. Some of them I've had to drill out if I wanted to use bigger, bigger wires or bigger, thicker gauges with it. It doesn't look like I have to do that in this case. This one actually came with some, some really I lost my black one. Did I just set it aside by accident? I did. These actually came with some nice little mini grabbers. I'm actually very impressed with them. And they're not the uh, cheaper ones, which I usually expect to see. Like, for example, this is the way the BNC to mini grabber cable originally came. And a lot of people are used to seeing these. I even have a drawer full of these as replacements if needed on the fly. And these are very, very cheap, you know, ABS kind of but they they stick sometimes they they bend easy so this is a really nice nice mini grabber I can tell you right now it's 100% copper I can see by the tint of it it's not some cheap uh, gold plated tin or anything it actually looks like the hook is wider in width than the mini grabbers on the, the cheap versions um, and it has some strength to it good spring retention very happy with that order 
So let's move on to some of the other things I ordered from Frankie Tong here. We'll wrap this up. Set that aside. We'll take the programmer and the Bluetooth chips. Let's see here. Grab those. Set those aside as well. So you can never have enough cable. And I was actually running short on some of... I can't remember what gauge I ordered here. Um, 18 gauge. So apparently I was running short on some eight, some of my 18 gauge silicon cable. So I ordered uh, about 3 meters of each. One black, one red. 18 gauge silicon cable. Seems to be nice texture. Very flexible. Seems to actually be a nice... Uh, Nice cable, let's take a closer look here. Yep, tin copper, threaded, not solid. Really nice cable. These wires will work perfect for any of the projects that I got coming up or making my own adapters or hooks and what have you. So, very nice buy from that. And again, I like the individual packaging. We can keep this back in this package and just throw a label on this bag that says the gauge and length and set that aside. Also got these little adapters here. These are to go from uh not quite sure what I was thinking when I bought these. I had something in mind. I don't remember what I had in mind. But it seems to be female banana to male male banana plug adapters. I have these X, X Tech kits that are, uh, ah, these X Tech kits. There we go. In fact, I think that is why I purchased it. I wanted to actually make a, a jumper cable out of it and uh, sometimes certain adapters don't like the shielded uh, banana plug insert. Um, like your power supply, for example. Your power supply usually has something similar to... These kind of plugs. So when you're dealing with these kind of banana plugs on your power supply, and you're trying to use a current set of cables that you own, you can't plug in to that because of the shield. Now the shielding is actually needed for me because some of my fluke plugs, especially the amp side of things, or the current side of the things on my fluke, actually has an optic sensor to make sure I'm actually plugged in to the correct, to the correct uh, outlet, and it uses the shielding. Uh, the optic sensor is actually triggered by the shielding, so the shielding is needed, but yet at the same time not needed when it comes to things like my power supply that has a, a hookup like this. So then these little adapters can actually just go in here and now I can go directly into my power supply and with the set on the other side or whatever whatever I decide to adapt on the other side such as another set of mini grabbers now just made a lot of my current cables more useful on different applications for different items and really nice uh, nice find I'm glad he sold these so these will definitely come in handy as well. Now another thing is sometimes you want to actually provide power but you also want to monitor power so you find yourself splitting off cables in certain ways and frankly I had these and I ordered these in apparently a 13 gauge, 12 gauge? I think it's 13 gauge. Really really thick high quality silicon wire. Um, since my power supply can do up to 10 amps I wanted some cable that would be able to handle that if I ever needed to use a full 10 amps. But this does have the shielding on it, which again is very nice to have the shielding on it because of my flip meter sometimes requires it with the optic reader. And at the same time, I can actually split these off if I need to. I can use the adapters that I purchased from it. If I need to plug right into my power supply, and then for my power supply, I can split off of that to do any type of monitoring. I might have to order some more of those adapters, actually. Nope. They actually do fit. So then I can put a stand standard set of probes off of there with a mini grabber on the other side if needed. So it gives me more options to split in different ways.
and they seem to work with well the X Tech cable for sure. They'll probably work with your standard fluke as well. Or you can plug directly into the fluke because it will recognize it since it does have this and some of my cables I can't use on the fluke for measuring current because it, it needs this shield to trip that optic sensor again. So this is actually a very nice buy. I'm going to definitely have to uh, order a couple more sets of these from him actually. I do like those. So we'll wrap these up too. We'll put these with the rest of my cables later. And here's a uh, Something with this logo, logo on there, 99centhobbies.com. It's a little static shield bag, completely sealed. So a little tear off now. To make sure. Oh no, it is okay. So we'll go ahead and open this up. See what we got in here. Nicely wrapped, well protected. Okay, this was unexpected. Wow, look at this. The XYZ Studio power monitor. This is the LCD version. It's the three PCB board. Uh, it does 14 15 volts. There are three amps. This is really nice. This is actually what I purchased the Bluetooth module for, as I mentioned previously. So, this Bluetooth module will adapt to this so I can do remote logging and see what kind of logging the software provides, as well as the programmers for updating the firmware on this. Um, this was completely unexpected. I do have one of these on order but the version I have on order is actually the OLED version and uh, the YXZ Studio actually came out with the new version which is a, an LCD, it's a larger LCD, it's easier to read um, it's able to provide more information on a single screen so you don't have to flip through as many menus so um, yes definitely a big thank you to Frankie Tong really didn't expect this. This was not on my order. We, we did a lot of discussion about it and the different features between the different models, the versions, uh, the difference between the LCD and the OLED versions. And the OLED versions are actually harder to get a hold of right now um, because I believe they're focused on the LCD and possibly a, a, a new uh, version coming out. Uh, I can't say for sure. You know, I'm, I'm not in contact with the manufacturer uh, YXE Studio. So, but I mean, we did do a lot of talk about the differences between the different versions. You know, they come in a, you have your red one and then you have your blue and your yellow one, which I believe are discontinued. The red might have replaced the blue and yellow. And not. Now there's even a black one out on the market, which is a USB 2 only. Um, the one I ordered, I didn't order for specifically the uh, OLED display I ordered it because it's USB 3 and USB 3 does have a few extra prongs and some of the devices that I'm looking to do power monitoring on are USB 3 so this one is a USB 2 and they look very they're gonna look very similar when I receive the other one we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison between the LCD and the OLED version USB 2 and the USB 3 version so this probably should have the latest firmware on there being firmware 20 I think it was a 2.7 I think was the latest firmware we were talking about and also you know if you take it apart you can actually solder a Bluetooth module in there or even a serial converted to Wi-Fi module as well and do remote logging and remote monitoring with it as well the accuracy of these things are just insane as far as how accurate they are uh, you know, using the, 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 the high quality parts that are in this. The black one, I think, is actually running three DACs on it. it is is insanely uh, accurate. And then this one actually is, is running two DACs and it's still insanely accurate. Again, I wasn't expecting this at all. So 
thank you to Frankie Tonk. This is a, a great gift. I'll definitely have to do a separate review on this. I'm going to see if I can get my USB 3 version in soon, and we can do a comparison side by side to see exactly how different the LCD to the OLED version is. It's a lot smaller than I expected, honestly. When you look at pictures, you really can't tell the size, but I mean, it's smaller than the one I've been using. It's smaller than the cheaper ones, for sure. It's got about the same height. Actually, no, it's, it's actually shorter in height on both of them. By far on this one, yeah. Amazing. Very lightweight, very portable. Switches on the side, nice location, I like that. And just a uh, amazing little gift, unexpected. But it is marked as a uh, super speed, and they're, I believe they're correcting that, if I'm not mistaken. This is just uh, probably an old back they accidentally put on here from their USB 3 version, because super speed is applies to USB 3, but don't, you know, not, not to be mistaken, this is USB 2. So we'll have to come back and do separate videos on this later. And this will be, the load tester is actually, even though it's supposed to be 1 amp and 2 amp, it doesn't reach a full 2 amp, it doesn't even reach a full 1 amp actually. But at least it's a consistent variable between the different testers. This will be the same amount. Basically the accuracy and what you're paying for on this and is the accuracy, the quality, the firmware update capability, the features they keep coming out with. They just keep making this thing better ever since I saw it a year ago. It's been doing nothing but getting better and better. So very excited about this. And I'll have to come back and do a separate video on that. Again, Frankie, I do appreciate it. Thank you very much. And definitely looking forward to doing more business in the future with you. Some of the fastest shipping I've ever received.